Blizzard is worse than you thought. Oh boy, here we go. Somebody said apparently I'm even in the video. Uh-oh. The year is 2023, and a once beloved game developer's reputation is in absolute freefall. No. Yep. What was at one point probably the highest rated developer in the industry, a studio that pumped yeah. out classic after classic, Holy shit. has now become the home of incomprehensible horror. Jesus. Corporate greed, broken promises, botched releases, yeah. stolen breast milk. This is the story of Blizzard Entertainment. Remember the logo? Remember that? The year is like 1991, and three guys have just graduated from the University of California. Damn. Alan Adham, Michael Morhaime, and Frank yep. Pierce. They get together to this create a game development until, like, studio in ago. Irvine called Silicon and Synapse. The name is deeply philosophical and well thought out, with Silicon sure. representing the building block of a computer, and Synapse the building block of a brain. Uh huh. However, people keep mistaking the silicon part for the material in breast implants. Anyway, well, they spent the first few years porting games to different systems. Ooh, but Star Fox. Soon begin producing their own original games. Yep. With the Lost Vikings in 1992. I had this one. And Rock and Roll Racing in 1993. I did not have this one. Eventually, they get sick of constantly being mixed up with women's breasts. So they decide to switch things up. Changing their name to Chaos Studios. Oh, sh However, bro, a company that, based bro. in Florida already has the trademark, and they're now Whoa. asking for a hundred thousand dollars. Jesus! Mm. They then decide to change the studio's name to Ogre Studios. Okay. But in 1994, they're acquired by a holding company for a few million dollars, and turns out their new owners aren't a fan of the new name. Oh! Okay. So they flip through a dictionary, and oh my God, boy, oh, there it is. In 1994, Blizzard releases their first self-published title, a real-time strategy game yep. called Warcraft Orcs and Humans. I didn't start with Warcraft 1. I never actually played Warcraft 1 either. I only played Warcraft 2 onward. And it's an instant success. Yeah. It's one of the earliest real-time strategy games to hit shelves, and it's a blast. Yep, you would go it to Circuit City and it would be there. Multiplayer, meaning mm -hmm. people can get together and go ham. And yep. the game does well. Selling 100,000 copies in the first year. Jesus. And for the first time, Blizzard Entertainment is profitable. Mm -hmm. They follow it up with Warcraft 2 in 1995. Bro, this game was so fucking good. This right here, this was the main computer game that I played as a kid. This was my game. It's another home run. Critically acclaimed. Yep. And now selling over a million copies in its first no year. No surprise. Nice. Shit it's now crazy. 1996. And a company called Condor mm -hmm. Games is looking for a publisher for their nearly complete game, yeah. Diablo. Blizzard has a little look, and they like. So they buy them and rename them Blizzard North. It's also at this point that Blizzard notices something. Warcraft 2 had picked up a lasting online player base, mostly through third-party networks that connected players over this magic new thing called the internet. Yep. So they decide to make their own Battle.net. Battle .net. Yep. Its original functionality is very Remember simple. whenever Blizzard tried to change the name of Battle.net to like Blizzard Network or something like that? And like everybody was like, no, let's go back to Battle.net. And then they're like, oh, okay. And then they had to change it back. Cool. With the ability for players to chat to each other. Blizzard Launcher, yeah, it's Battle.net, okay? on December 31st, 1996, it launches alongside Diablo, and people log on and play. Diablo is a massive hit, also selling over a million copies That's within its first year. In 1998, Blizzard launches StarCraft, an RTS set in space. It's actually it crazy how StarCraft came out in 1998, and people are still playing Brood War regularly. That is fucking insane. It sells bigly. I had StarCraft grows as well. A massive esports scene. Diablo 2 launches in 2000. This was the big one. Another smash hit. It reaches yeah. almost 3 million sales by the end of the year. This was crazy. Becoming the fastest. Bro, like they had Diablo uh, Diablo 2 boxes at like Walmart until like 2008, 2010. Like this game was so big for so long. Selling PC game of all time. In 2002, Warcraft is back, oh, and yeah. now it has an extra dimension. Warcraft 3 sells 1 million units in just one month. It well, like, what's so crazy about Warcraft 3 is that, like, you might not really think about this, but, like, 
back then the graphics for Warcraft 3 were beyond next level. They were so ridiculously fucking good that I remember playing Warcraft 3 on my mom's laptop and it would take me like an hour just to get through like one cinematic because of how how in depth and like how groundbreaking the graphics were. It was nuts. becoming the new fastest selling PC yeah. game. It also releases with a campaign editor, mm -hmm. which spawns a series of popular mods like Defense of the Ancients. Yep. And after its expansion in 2003, Frozen it's all hands on deck for Blizzard's next project. Yep. I remember, so whenever my dad like started, like, cause he was like finally in like 2000 and like, I would say like 2002, somewhere around there, he was like, okay, I've really got to get a PC at home. Because, like, at this point, he was, like, an executive at a publishing company, and, like, he needed to be able to have email and, and work from home, right? So him and his friend Randy got together and collectively spent the most amount of money possible on a PC, and he was asking me about the PC, and he was like, yeah, we're thinking about getting this one. Like, what do you think? And I, like, looked at it, and I then thought about, like, what the Warcraft 3 specs were, and I was like... Yeah. Yeah, I think you're going to need that one. Yeah, that's that's that that's definitely the one you need. And then as soon as he bought the PC, I I took Warcraft 3 over to his house and I remember I would come over there all the time. He would actually get pissed because I was just sitting there farming Warcraft 3. I was playing that shit constantly. It was amazing. The year is 2004. Man. And Blizzard is getting ready to release its biggest game yet. Yep. They'd seen how big MMOs like EverQuest were getting, and yep. thought they'd try their hand. And after $60 million mm -hmm. and five years of work, it's finally nearing release. And in November 2004, World of Warcraft launches. You've got to really keep in mind like what a run that was. From like Diablo 1, from like Warcraft 2 to Diablo 1 to Warcraft 2 to Diablo 2 to StarCraft, maybe StarCraft was before Diablo 2, I don't remember, and then Brood War, and then you had Warcraft 3, and then World of Warcraft. Which, again, like, World of Warcraft, like, the graphics for the game were... I'm trying to think of a game that, like, kind of had graphics that were that good for that time. It was just, like, the graphics were totally fucking groundbreaking. They were insane. And it takes the world by storm. Smashing even Blizzard's forecasts. Yep. There are so many players trying to log on in the first week that their servers have a complete meltdown. With server Naturally. queues reaching the thousands. Oh yeah. Get past the queues and actually into a game. Well, now you're greeted with a ton of latency issues. Yep. And a probable disconnection. Meaning you're now back on that queue screen. Oh, I remember that. After the initial server problems are ironed out and people can actually play, mm -hmm. the game sucks people in on mass. Yep. Fans are very enthusiastic. It hoovers up awards left, mm -hmm. right, and center, and sells a ton of copies. It was the game, reaching man. Reaching almost 6 million sales by the end of its first year. Think about that. 6 million fucking World people. World of Warcraft isn't like your average game, though. Instead of simply buying a copy, players have to pay a $15 monthly subscription fee to play. And Six you've got to keep in mind, $15 in 2004, 2005, 2006, that's like $30 now. It was huge. It's a lot 15 of money. Every month. Yeah. And Blizzard isn't doing too badly. Everyone is playing the game, and its ads go on to feature a ton of celebrities. Mm -hmm. I'm Chuck Norris, and I approve this game. And others like Vin Diesel, William yep. Shatner, Henry Cavill, Mila Kunis, and Dave Chappelle announce their addictions in various interviews. Yep. World of Warcraft is everywhere. World of Warcraft would also result in the launch of BlizzCon in 2005. Yep. A massive well, annual- Well, BlizzCon always was basically, like, I always viewed BlizzCon as like, BlizzCon is really just the place where, like, Warcraft people meet up with, like, their guilds. I feel like that's like, whenever you go to BlizzCon, you see most of the people there from World of Warcraft. ...invention that would feature big musical acts and announcements for Blizzard's future games. Oh, Fans Diablo could also 3. ask the devs questions, and were sometimes even featured. At this point, Blizzard is among the all-time greats of gaming. Every game oh, yeah. a smash hit. They Absolutely. could do no wrong. To be fair, though, even in Vanilla WoW, people thought the game was garbage. Like, there were always doom and gloomers. Even in Vanilla WoW and Burning Crusade, there were always doom and gloomers. 
But first, uh -oh. flying a plane is easy. Just get in, flip a few switches, and you're off. I thought that was going to be footage of something else. Turn, turn. But in War Thunder, it's yeah. even easier. And a ton of fun. Jump yeah. into intense PvP that takes you from the ground <laughs> to the yeah, sea. Yeah, because remember that one time, yeah. Skies. In fact, War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game of all time. Just look at all those things. There's more than 2,000 of them. Someone that likes the small and agile, or a fan game. of the more voluptuous. Well, yeah. War Thunder has something Give me my, give me my McDonald's the game tank from indeed, Armored Core 6. With a dynamic damage system that damages individual components, Ooh. and a huge customization system. Hundreds of camos, historical emblems, and over a Pickle century Rick. of vehicles to pick from. And their Just model, what I wanted. painstakingly detailed to 100% accuracy, which you can enjoy in gorgeous mm -hmm. 4K graphics. And you can play on Xbox, PlayStation, and PC for free. Damn. Fancy a large bonus pack with all this stuff? Just sign up through the link in the description or the pinned comments below. Wow. I actually wanted to try War Thunder after they had that one drama thing happen. I might play it one day. It'd be a game that if, like, I got a sponsor for this, I would play it. The year is now 2006. World Ooh. of Warcraft has almost 10 Very million good active year. subscribers and is bringing in a ton of money. So naturally, it had turned a few heads. Uh huh. One of those heads, Bobby Kotick, CEO of Activision. Ooh. Now in 2006, Activision had made good tracks in just about every genre of games. Yeah. Except one. And one that was now booming. Online games. The MMO. Yeah. With Warcraft currently bringing in over a billion dollars a year in subscriptions alone, mm -hmm. he's interested. Now at this point, Blizzard has changed hands numerous times and is now owned by a company called Vivendi. So Kotick approaches Vivendi with a proposition. Vivendi receives money. Activision receives Blizzard. However, Simple. Vivendi says no. Ooh. Instead, Vivendi offers to merge their gaming subdivision with Activision, with Vivendi owning a majority share in the resulting company. Damn. And after a brief hesitation them. from Kotick, in 2008, the deal closes. Activ I want to let you guys know less than a year less than a year after this deal closed was whenever they added the first uh store mount into the game. Activision Blizzard opens its doors with Kotick yeah. as CEO and Activision and Blizzard now its two subsidiaries. Yeah, I remember Blizzard thinking to myself, would supposedly hmm. retain most of its autonomy and keep their CEO, co-founder Michael Morhaime. Yep. It's now 2010 and Blizzard has gone from just under 500 employees before the launch of World of Warcraft. Mm -hmm to now over 4,600. The majority Jesus. of whom are preparing for the launch of StarCraft 2 in July. And the third because like, Well, StarCraft 2 went so hard. Like, I don't think a lot of you guys remember, but like in 2010, StarCraft 2 was like the eSport. Like, that's what it was all about. It was so fucking big. It's like, I think that it had the biggest fall off of any eSport that I've ever seen. Warcraft expansion because it was so huge in December. Now, these launches were not small. Warcraft yeah. had been hitting peak after peak of players and was now at 12 mm -hmm. million monthly subscribers. And StarCraft 2's sales projections are also sizable. That's a lot. But Blizzard currently has a problem their forums, they're a little bit toxic. Ooh. Blizzard has a big team of moderators, yeah, the real idea, but thing. according to them, this still wasn't enough. So, behind the scenes, they get brainstorming. And someone has a brilliant idea. Ooh. How about we just force everyone that posts on our forums to use their real first and last name? Genius. Smart. And in July 2010, real ID is I remember this drama happened whenever I was raiding ICC. Failed. Yeah. And people absolutely hate People it. are really mad about this. So in an attempt to sell the idea to players, Blizzard's community manager posts his full name on the forum. See guys, it's fine. But almost instantly, people descend on the forum and get to work. And within mere minutes, they find and publish his home address, phone number, age, Facebook, family names, and a list of his favorite music and movies. Okay, you know what? Fair enough. And after just a few days of being announced, Real ID is scrapped entirely. Which, to be fair, it was very stupid for Blizzard to have done that. But... 
They took the feedback. They said, wait a minute, guys. I think we fucked up with this. We're going to change it back. By 2009, the Warcraft 3 mod yeah. Defense of the Ancients had gained a significant following and had even spawned a whole new genre of games, <laughs> MOBAs. For Ugh. much of that time, Ugh. Blizzard had paid little attention to the mod or the game. Mm -hmm. But the success of the recently launched League of Legends could no longer be ignored. And Blizzard finally steps in, oh, shit. starting work on their take on the genre, titled Blizzard Dota. Around the same time, and Valve wants to make their yep. own MOBA. They'd hired the head dev of the original Dota mod, snapped up the Dota trademark, and they're calling their new game Dota 2. Damn. Blizzard is furious. Yeah, they tried to shut him down. So in 2012, they file a statement mm -hmm. of opposition, arguing that the name Defense of the Ancients was associated exclusively with Warcraft right. due to it being made in their map editor. However, this argument has issues. Mm -hmm. See, the mod was created in Warcraft 3's map editor, but that map editor had no specific terms and conditions on ownership of said maps, IP, and concepts. That's why... Whenever Blizzard made Warcraft 3 Reforged, they added that into the uh, the legal text that you have to accept. Yeah, they changed the legal text because of this. Because they, they lost this copyright. Out of court a few months after, with Valve getting the commercial rights to the term Dota, mm -hmm. and Dota 2 releases in 2012. It's massively successful. Oh yeah. It goes on to be an esports giant. Blizzard gets non-commercial use of the title for its community and renames Blizzard Dota to Heroes of the Storm, which releases in 2015, oh. and support is canned three years later. Blizzard would change its licensing agreements for all future games to include their ownership of player-created yep. maps in an attempt to avoid this ever happening again. Yeah, they never wanted to have that happen. Because, like, think about how much money they lost on it's that. It's 2012. And the massively anticipated sequel to Diablo 2 is looking like it's releasing this year. Its development had been a bit rocky, with its dev team, Blizzard And North. you also have to keep in mind that, like, at this time, Catacly- So, like, Diablo, uh... Diablo 3 came out in, like, I think May of 2011? No. It was May of 2012. Yeah, it came out May 2012. Because, like, that was during Dragon Soul. And whenever I was raiding Dragon Soul, I remember, like, everybody said, like, the week that Diablo came out, you had to still come to the raid, and I didn't go to the raid. Because I was playing Diablo 3, and I was like, I'm an officer, I don't have to follow the rules. And I, I do the best DPS in the guild, I don't have to follow the rules. And so I didn't. And so, yeah, that happened, and uh, that's, again, why everybody was happy whenever I stopped raiding. And so... Uh, and so that that's that's what it was. And uh, at that time, people were actually pretty negative about WoW, and they were very unhappy about it. And one of the big reasons why Diablo 3 did so well and it was so big is that Blizzard thought of something at the time. It was called the Annual Pass. And you would pay, you would like agree to pay for a WoW sub for a year. And if you did that, they give you the Tyrael's Charger mount, and they would give you Diablo 3 for free. So that's like one of the big reasons why Diablo 3 was so big. Yeah, the annual pass. Being canned in 2005, along with their version of the game. But on the 15th of May 2012, mm -hmm. the rebooted Diablo 3 launches. The game is horrendous. For one, its launch is horrific. The game is online 37. Only, and turns out there are massive server issues. Yeah. People are spamming their login details over and over, mm -hmm. only to be kicked out by Error 37. <laughs> What's worse, there's no queue system in place, so you have to manually retry every minute. Yep. This issue takes over a week to fix. Then there's the auction house. Here, loot can be bought. Um, I think that the, like the uh, like the problems with Diablo 3 were a lot like just in terms of the way the game played and the game was really buggy. Just straight up problems with the game. I don't think that people had a problem with the real money auction house at all because people had D2 JSP and they were buying and selling stuff in Diablo 2 for real money for years. So I actually don't think the real money auction house had any real factor in damaging the game. I, I, maybe this is unpopular opinion, but that's generally, genuinely what my opinion is.
bought and sold using your mum's credit card. Activision Blizzard gets filthy rich, while the balancing gets obliterated. Jesus. Endgame content is also essentially non-existent. However, the game sells almost 4 million copies in its first 24 hours. Well, it's it's not that the end of game content was non-existent. It's that doing runs through Inferno mode was, like, basically impossible for all but, like, two classes. And, like, I remember I leveled up a Barbarian. And, like, I just got one shot by the mobs in Inferno mode. Like, I didn't even have a chance. And then I played a Demon Hunter... And it was just like, I, I went and I cleared the entire thing like it was nothing. It was not even a big deal at all. And Kirk over did time, it. Yeah, but he took a long time, time around. For it. In 2014, the real money auction house is closed, and Blizzard launches Reaper of Souls, an add-on praised almost unanimously. My understanding for why they removed the real money auction house was actually because of regulation issues. Uh, because, like, they were basically creating a currency... Uh, a currency trading service because you were able to buy and sell gold on the real money auction house. And by doing that, you opened yourself up to like certain types of regulation. So it was a, it was a legal reason why they got rid of it. That was my understanding. I could be wrong though. And by the way, I think Reaper of Souls in a lot of cases was actually a downgrade from the original Diablo three. This is probably one of my most unpopular Diablo opinions, but I think Reaper of Souls made the game worse. Honestly, they're ready to make a second add-on to the game. It removed trading. It removed trading and it removed the deterministic way that you could work towards gear through buying gold and sort of through, <laughs> um, through uh, buying the gear on the auction house. But management says no. Apparently, executives see the game as a massive yeah. failure <laughs> and demand devs jump ship. The year is now 2015. And also, uh, Reaper of Souls, like, did well for a while, but it did also fall off pretty fast as well, because people just didn't really like the seasonal aspect of it as much. I think that's kind of, like, what ended up happening, because I remember watching Quinn in, like, Season 4 of Diablo 3, and then there was a reason why Quinn moved over to playing PoE and playing other games, because Quinn was originally a Diablo-only streamer, and then I remember Quinn moved over to playing World of Warcraft and like sometimes it was like WAD, but I know he was playing a lot of WoW on stream in Legion because I remember watching Quinn uh, do the Mage Tower. And I remember thinking, this guy sucks. I'm going to go live at night right now and show everybody how it's done. And then I wiped on it for two hours because I kept choking on stream. Past 10 years have well. seen massive expansions to Warcraft, including controversial changes to the game and its yeah. mechanics. And player numbers reflect that, now being in steep decline. A growing number well, and of- And also, like, this completely, like, I think this video totally, like, glosses over, uh, are they talking about WAD? Yeah, yeah, I guess they will. Like, Warlords of Draenor was, like, a massive fucking failure. It was insane how bad it was, especially compared to, like, Mists of Pandaria was kind of a miss in terms of, like, theme. Like, I think Mr. Pandaria, like, if, if Warlords of Draenor had come out with the amount of content that Mr. Pandaria had, it would be considered the best expansion ever. The problem was that the theme for the expansion was fucking stupid. Pandas? Get the fuck out of here. What the fuck are you talking about pandas and feelings and shahs of anger for? Like, what the fuck is this? Let, let's go back to killing people. Like, remember whenever orcs killed humans and humans killed orcs? Let's just do that again. That's it. It's so fucking stupid. They just long to go back to the days of vanilla. That's Version why people got so game, hard over the, 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 the WAD trailer. One fan even floats the idea to Blizzard themselves at BlizzCon yeah. 2013. Here's how that goes. Have you oh. ever thought about adding servers for previous expansions as they were then? No. Okay then. We'll just make one ourselves. No. And the fan made Nostalrius vanilla server goes online in February 2015, running version 1.12, mm -hmm. a month after the original launch. It's not long before the server gets massively popular. Which again, it became massively popular because this was during Warlords of Draenor. And there was nothing to do in the game because of how bad WAD was. Like, for anybody who says that any expansion was like Shadowlands was worse than WAD, there has never been an expansion that was as bad as Warlords of Draenor. 
Like, it was such a massive fucking failure in, like, 50 different ways. Like, BFA was. BFA was amazing compared to WAD. You are insane if you actually think that BFA was worse than WAD. It was not even close. Almost a million accounts registered. It's also not long before Blizzard catches wind and brings the hammer down. Yeah. Their lawyers sent them a cease and desist in 2016, and the server yeah. is promptly shut down. Realizing they bitch. were completely wrong about vanilla Warcraft, Blizzard do a full 180 and announce Warcraft Classic in I was 2017. There. Yes! Back in 2007, Blizzard started work on a huge MMO called Project Titan. It was described as a combination of Left 4 Dead, Team Fortress, and The Sims. Hmm. But development led nowhere, and six years later, the plug is pulled. Oh. A massive failure on Blizzard's part, and a major internal embarrassment. Well, it How wasn't really a massive failure, because my understanding is that they converted Titan over to Overwatch. So it was like, ah, it's okay. However... The team behind it would attempt to rework the remains of the story and assets yeah. into another project. There's and in Overwatch. 2016, Overwatch hits shelves. And it's amazing. It's People critically it. acclaimed across the board and massively popular. Especially quickly becoming on other one of the most popular esports titles on the market. Yep. That, paired with their genre pioneer and card game Hearthstone back in 2014 that now has almost 100 million players. And Blizzard is looking Yeah, Hearthstone was actually a really popular game. Like, for a long time. I remember uh, this girl I would play WoW with a lot, Cora. She would constantly try to get me to play Hearthstone with her. And I was like, why the fuck would I play Hearthstone if I can just go to the card shop and play Magic the Gathering? Like, I don't get this. Like, why would I... What the fuck? Like, I, what? However, there are problems brewing. See, I can go Overwatch to was the last big game that had in the pipeline for a while. Yeah. And they realize they don't have much to show off for BlizzCon 2018. So Blizzard uh... rushes to find something to show off. Got it. Don't you guys have Fast bombs? forward to November 2018, and their presentation is ready to go. They sprinkle a few niche -er announcements here and there, like a remastered Warcraft uh -huh. 3, but they have one big announcement centerpiece. After six long years... A brand new Diablo. You know what? So, 2017 BlizzCon, I remember after Classic WoW got announced, it was the first time that I met Soda Poppin. And Chance walks in the doors of the Hilton Hotel, and this is whenever he still had the pink hair. It was right after they had announced Classic WoW. And we hugged each other and we were like, it's fucking happened. Like, we did it, man. Because <laughs> this is after, like, he had made his video that was really popular. Mark Kern took all of the names to the Blizzard headquarters. And, like, I had made a video. Everybody was making videos. And, like, it finally fucking happened. Like, you have no idea how, like, what a cathartic experience it was whenever they fucking said, you know, Classic WoW is actually going to happen. Like, I... Oh my god, man. That was so awesome. I was so happy. And so that did happen. Then 2018, I wasn't even really planning on going to BlizzCon because the only reason I went to 2017 was I did all craft there. And they like paid for me to go and set everything up. And so I was like, okay, fine, whatever, I'll go. But um, that was whenever I first started dating Izzy, uh, Pink Sparkles. And she was like, okay, you know, you're going to go to BlizzCon so we can meet. And I'm like, okay, fine, I'll do that. So to be honest with you guys, I only went to BlizzCon 2018 to meet her. And I didn't even see this happen live. I was busy. I have no idea. I, I had no idea this shit happened until like hours later. And like, I made a tweet about it, like, oh, Diablo Mortal Bad. And it's like, yeah, that was it. For mobile. Bruh. Yeah, like, look, I, I didn't even give a fuck. Come play the mobile game that has nothing to do. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm amazed, honestly. It's this bad. This is fucking insane. I, I don't even know like what to even say about uh, this. I was wondering, is this uh, an outer season is. April Fool's joke? Uh, we don't have any plans at the moment to do a uh, PC. Well, they did do it. To be fair, do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys all have phones. Phone, phone. right? The game eventually launches, and it's bad. Firstly, it's not even developed by Blizzard, but their Chinese partner NetEase. 
and turns out that's one of the really big factors that i wish more people would understand about diablo immortal is that diablo immortal did not fail because it was pay to win diablo immortal failed because it was bad that's the real reason had nothing to do with the quality of the game it's monetized or sorry it had to everything to do with the quality of the game not the monetization at all it was a fundamentally bad game it costs over half a million dollars to max out a single character and becomes the worst rated game for one season ever on metacritic yeah By 2018, mm -hmm. fans are noticing something. Activision Blizzard had been creeping, and Blizzard was changing. See, back in 2013, Acti Blizzard had bought back the remaining Vivendi shares for about yep. $7 billion. That's a lot of money. Meaning they, and by extension, Bobby Kotick, now had complete control of both Activision and Blizzard. Ooh. Fast forward to 2018, and this creeping had only got worse. Because of the slow I tried to tell people I try bro I really tried I tried so hard I was like guys they're adding in store mounts they're adding in level boosts like you have to guys please please like say this is bad and they're like no it's good it's good it's okay it's fine and then they add in the lot token they're like oh that's good that's good they're adding in the lot token I said guys it's not good and they said no it is good and I tried to fucking say it man and nobody wanted to listen I even poured salt on my head. I did. I was furious. Nobody took it seriously except for me and Total Biscuit and a handful of other people. But overall, they this the spender's gonna spend. Yep. And in game releases, Blizzard revenues are taking an absolute nosedive. Whoa. So Active Blizzard steps in. It pushes the company to cut costs and gets them to produce games at a faster pace. Of course. With Kotick apparently installing his own executives within Blizzard to there ensure that happens. Apparently, tired of active Blizzard's meddling, Blizzard co-founder Mike Morhaime steps down as president and CEO and leaves the company after 27 years of work. He's succeeded by Warcraft's executive producer, J. Allen Brack. This guy. And by the way, you don't want to that. I still think it is so fucking funny that whenever Mike, because I did the math on this, and apparently Blizzard was made aware of the California investigation for all of the sexual assault stuff about six months after Mike Morheim left, and J. Allen Brack less than six months, actually. This dude basically inherited a sinking ship. And I remember, because, like, look at this. This was 2014, and you can see videos of him in, like, 2018 and, and, and 17 with all brown hair. And then, <laughs> like, two years. It's all gray. All gray. Yeah, gray. Yeah, white hair in, like, eight months, bro. He aged 30 years in two years. Yeah. Bro, I almost, I mean, the guy's a fucking asshole, right? But I do kind of feel bad for him in a way. Because he really inherited a big fuck up. Do that either. You think you do, but you don't. And as soon as this happens, we accelerate. The company immediately uh -huh. prioritizes cutting costs, and the Heroes of the Storm's development team is outright annihilated. It's Keep in mind that whenever the Heroes of the Storm game was announced, that they just basically like gave up on it. People were generally happy because nobody actually liked the game. Nobody was playing the game. It was a dead game. It was a totally fucking dead game. Sports League is also scrapped right before its 2019 season. As a result, entire teams, commentators, and support staff are suddenly left jobless. Yeah. And despite 2018 being a record... It's not true, though. It actually is true. Like, if you go and you look at the amount of people that were actually consuming content and watching the tournaments and watching any event that had anything to do with Heroes of the Storm, and you compared it to Dota 2 or League of Legends, Heroes of the Storm less, had, had less than 5% of the market share. Like, it was a totally dead game in the market. It made no actual impact in the market. It didn't really bring people over from Dota or League. It was nice. As, like, I played it too. I got to rank one in the game on, like, the beta. Which, like, it did, that doesn't really mean a lot. But, like, I was decent at it, right? I played Nova, Zeratul, Anubarak, and I think Muradin too, a little bit. And I played Vala also. Uh, and it was, it was a fun game. But the truth is that 
Yeah. Nobody gave a fuck about the game. That's the truth. Nobody gave a fuck about it. Year for Active Blizzard profits, they lay off 800 employees. Almost 10% the of the numbers. Hey, hey, the numbers they begin speak for themselves. They're rehiring the exact same jobs a couple of years later. Mm -hmm. So going into 2019, people are not happy. But turns out, over on the other side of the world, and things are happening in Hong Kong, they're not good. Their government has proposed a bill that yep. would give China more authority over them. Oh. And that's not too popular. People didn't like that. At the same just, time, just Hong Kong police. native Blitz Chung is participating in Hearthstone's eSports League. Yep. He wins and uses the post-game interview to show his support for the protests. <laughs> but as soon as he says it, something happens. See, uh -oh. Blizzard has a huge player base in China, and to keep that player base available to them, they have to bend over backwards for the Chinese government. Yeah. So when this happens, they go scorched earth. They take the live stream down seconds after he says it, slap him with a year-long ban, and Damn. even confiscate his prize money. Even the guys casting the stream are fired. It's not long before the internet catches wind, and people are furious. Oh yeah, and people were really, really, really mad about this. They were absolutely furious about it, because it was just like, yeah, it was awful. Taking his money as fuck, At yeah, one point, it was crazy. even Congress members have a go. After a few days of pressure, yeah. J. Allen Brack eventually comes out. He reduces the ban to half a year and grants Blitz Chung his prize money back. Mm -hmm. He also says that Blizzard's relationships with China had no influence on their decision. Of course not. Blizzard is starting to look seriously not. not cool. So they decide to go into BlizzCon 2019 with the big guns, announcing Diablo 4 and... Which, Overwatch. by the way, I mean, by the time BlizzCon 2019 happened, people, like, generally, like, again, all of these, like, social issues, like, the sexual harassment stuff, the Blitzchung stuff, the Hong Kong stuff, all of these things were all basically irrelevant compared to the fact that the game was problematic. That was the real issue. The games were bad. Watch 2. Also, that Warcraft remaster they'd announced at the Infamous I remember uh, McConnell and I watched this live. Coming out next year. This On stream. This was fucking awesome. Back in 2015, Blizzard had set up a subdivision to remaster old games, the first of yeah. which would be Warcraft 3. And in January 2020, the highly anticipated remaster launches. Oh. And, oh boy, the game is beyond terrible. Here's why. Before launch, Warcraft 3's advertising... They had another company make the game. ...touted multiple new features. Over four hours of cinematic new cutscenes, more yep. story, and new voice acting. A complete campaign overhaul, changing the story to be more in line with the current Warcraft lore. Uh -huh. But when players log on, turns out absolutely none of this is in the game. This is after being advertised on the website for over a year. Do you year. remember whenever they had the tournament for Warcraft 3 Reforged and then the game crashed two times in the middle of a match and they had to restart it three times? Liar! There's also a ton of features from the original Warcraft 3 just outright missing. Yeah. Here are a few of them. No ranked play? No. No profiles? Uh, no. No. No account stats? Uh, no. No custom campaign? No. No clans? No. No cross-region play for custom games? Why would um, they do that? No. And no offline play? <laughs> no. It's possible after a See, few like, Warcraft 3 is one of those games where it's like, I have no problem with a game like Diablo 4 being always online because of just, like, the nature of what the game is. But... There is no reason that Warcraft 3 Reforged needed to be always online. There's literally no reason. It's totally unjustifiable. It's like making Elden Ring offline. Or online only. Reforged is just a nerf? Yeah, exactly. Like, as I said, bro, like, y'all might not remember this, but before Warcraft 3 Reforged came out, everybody wanted Reforging to come back in WoW. After this game got released... Nobody ever asked for reforging ever again. That ended it. The game was so bad, it actually changed what people wanted in WoW. They said, please do not reforge anything in this fucking game. We've seen what you do. Patches, but it's a little complicated. Also, yeah. after some digging, 
People realize the main menu background is actually a Chrome-based web app and is taking up more of your CPU power than the actual game. Online matchmaking sucks and kicks you out all the time. This is without a way to reconnect, by the way. Of course. Graphics are worse than advertised. Treason! Have you lost your mind, Arthas? The new art direction is bad. Five of the game's maps are exactly yeah, the same. Yeah, I thought the art for the game was trash. ...as the original. And poor optimization. Tons of crashes. And Ooh. countless bugs. On top of all of that, Reforged is a mandatory update for everyone with the original game. Yeah. Own the original with no intention of upgrading. Too bad. Well, here's an additional 30 gigabytes of install size anyway. Mm -hmm. All of this amounts to one of the worst launches of a game in history. Within a few days of release, it ends up at 0.5 out of 10 on Metacritic. At this the time, really the lowest Metacritic score in history. Before Until the next time it gets beaten by their other games. Like, you'll see that Blizzard hits... Blizzard used to hit records for best-selling games. Now they they hit records for worst-reviewed games of all time. ...dethroned by Diablo Immortal. That then got so dethroned by Overwatch 2. people pile in to request refunds. Uh -huh. wait, you've booted up the game even just once? You're not Sorry, getting your money back. you're not allowed. Ooh, There's so ooh. much outcry about the game, however, that Blizzard eventually caves and starts actually granting refunds. The game is so bad that the entire classic games division of Blizzard is completely canned. You're fired! Get out of here! It also- By the way, good. ...causes an upcoming Diablo 2 remake to be pushed back more than a year. Which, to be fair, the Diablo 2 remake, I haven't heard anything bad about it. I think the cinematics, the trailers, uh, everything were, like, recreated in a way that I think was pretty good. And the game was pretty good. Yeah, like, they actually, that is a W, though. We have to keep that in mind. So it's 2021, and Blizzard's reputation is currently abhorrent. Ooh. But luckily, Overwatch 2 is just around True. the corner. Oh, hold on a sec. Oh, God. Turns out that over the last two years, the California oh, yeah. Civil Rights Department had been investigating Activision Blizzard due to multiple reports of sexual harassment from staff. And by this July 2021, time. they had enough evidence to file suit. That was whenever I started playing Final Fantasy, by the way. The lawsuit states that sexual harassment, unwanted advances, mm -hmm. and groping are common within Blizzard, both before and after the merge. This includes the mention of an executive suite at 2013's BlizzCon. It's not a nice place. In fact, some employees literally dub it the Cosby Suite. Yep. Then there's the alleged underpaying of women and complaints to both HR and the president repeatedly being ignored. <laughs> but there was something else. The employee's breast milk. It keeps being stolen. To be fair, this was never actually confirmed that, like, they never figured out what happened with this. It was all conjecture. In the lawsuit, more than one employee alleges breast milk theft. Yeah. It was very clearly breast milk, in baggies, with a baby's face on it, a former producer claims. One day, I went to retrieve my pumped supply at the end of the day, and it was gone. The fallout is monumental, and makes headlines industry-wide. Few people are spared. Current Diablo 4 lead, gone. His yeah. character's name in Overwatch, also gone. Level designer on World of Warcraft, gone. Yep. Head of HR, Definitely gone. <laughs> yeah, Warcraft League say. gone. Jay Allen gone. Their chief legal gone. The Wall Street Journal also alleges that Kotick knew about the whole thing. Ign By the way, Kotick not gone. Kotick's totally fine. Had nothing to do with this. And he just made $200 million on selling the company to Microsoft. Audit. It's Bobby's world, cases, yeah. Even jumped in himself. He denies most of the allegations. I did not. But eventually <laughs> apologizes for a one-time instance where he left a voicemail threatening to have his assistant killed. He actually did do that, by the way. He literally threatened to have somebody killed. It's all fine then. Water it's under the bridge. Just totally normal. Sponsors like T-Mobile, Coca-Cola, Kellogg, IBM, and Pringles also all jump ship from the Overwatch Esports League. And Activision Blizzard is hit with a class action lawsuit on behalf of its shareholders. What? Overall, what? the situation's not looking great. Activision Blizzard denies most of the claims, and in June 2022, yeah. they investigate themselves and find no wrongdoing. There it is.
Again, and keep in mind, Riot had this same problem, but the difference is that the games that Riot was making were good, so the players didn't give a shit. The immediate reaction so to Overwatch 2's announcement was one of confusion. Overwatch 1 was a monetized game with a thriving player base and regular updates. The kind of game that doesn't need a sequel. So this was a strange move. Overwatch yeah. 2's development would also mean the end of support for Overwatch 1 in 2020, with us seeing no new Overwatch content for multiple years, essentially killing the game. What? But with Overwatch 2, Blizzard reassures us it was all worth it. Just look at all this new stuff. 5v5 instead of 6v6. I was super excited about Overwatch 2. I was. Like, I always thought the Overwatch universe was really cool. And, like, I was hoping that we'd get PvE content and we'd have, like, cities that we could, like, play our own characters in. Yeah, I was really excited for it. Tiny new graphics, balancing changes, map free Yeah, runs, I played it a lot, new maps, remember? Three new heroes, more than 30 new skins, a new game mode, a battle pass and cosmetics shop, and most importantly, a PvE campaign. Oh, yeah. People have been longing for a story in the Overwatch universe, and Absolutely. now it was finally happening. And it was ambitious. Blizzard shows off a full campaign, along yep. with hero missions, talents, and massive skill trees unique to each hero. Look at that. Hundreds of missions at launch, they announce. A truly replayable campaign. And don't worry. With Overwatch 2, Blizzard tells us they were redefining what a sequel really means. Overwatch 1 players get all the new maps, updates, and heroes that release in Overwatch 2, and both player bases can cross-play together. Yep. The Simple purchase enough. of Overwatch 2 essentially only granting the PvE mode. Okay, sold. Yeah, Play I remember whenever I heard this, I was like, okay, this seems great. This is awesome. Players are on board. Yeah, I was. 10th of March 2022, and Blizzard has an announcement. Look, we know we said hundreds of missions at launch, yeah. but, well, it's how taking a zero? while. So we're just going to release the game now without it. Yeah, how about zero? Later. Yeah. Then in June, they come out again. The game's now free to play and launch. You know what really fucking pissed me off about this is the fact that Imaru got sponsored to play Overwatch 2 like 15 times. Meanwhile, I was the only person who actually defended Overwatch 2 and I died on that cross. I never ever ever said that i thought it was a wrong like it was a bad decision i defended them making the skins expensive i totally fucking i went to bat for overwatch 2 and i played the game the entire time brand risk what the fuck are you talking about brand risk absolutely not they just should have fucking they should be, they should pay me retroactively so look at all the fucking views on, that, on those videos and send me some fucking money like, I tried to defend that goddamn game, and I did it for fucking free. Fuck, man. They fucking hated you? Yeah. They knew you were gonna fanboy for free. I know, man. I need to stop playing video games. Launching in October. But anyway, yeah. on the 4th of October, 2022, it goes live. Unpaid shit. There were some issues. Events are bad, tons of balancing issues, yep. the looking for group feature is now just completely gone, mm -hmm. but mainly, there's the new cosmetic system. In Overwatch 1, earning cosmetics was simple, just yep. play the game, level up, and earn loot boxes that give you skins. And do you remember how much drama started about this? Because I said that I thought the Overwatch 2 system was better, I still think that by the way. I think the game's a disappointment and a joke, but it has nothing to do with that reason. You could pay for them. But that was completely optional. In Overwatch 2, yep. things are different. Blizzard has now slapped on a season. I know, battle everybody pass disagreed system, with me. Where the bulk and of cosmetics wrong. would now be unlocked. There's also a rotating store, mm -hmm. and the prices there aren't great. Yep. You can unlock skins for free through the challenge system, but there's a problem. It takes about eight months to get one. A simple yep. character recolor takes almost four weeks. All of this means that it will take you around 327 Ooh. years to get all the stuff you could get Ooh. relatively quickly for free in Overwatch yep. 1. Better get playing. Also, there's now a new hero every other season, and they'd be locked behind the later levels of the season pass. Your options are, spend every minute of your life grinding for them, or pay up. Give me money. In yep. Overwatch 1, they were unlocked straight away. 
Fans don't take kindly to these changes. Yep. But then in May 2023, Blizzard comes out again. So, that PvP hero campaign that we've been advertising and was pretty This much was what was so crazy. I was actually shocked that they did this. Where they just straight up announced, by the way, the game that you bought all these skins for and these battle passes for, we're just not going to do it. Yeah, we're just kidding. That's never you stop defending. I did. I did. I was like, listen, guys, enough is enough. That's it. Enough is enough. The sole reason we made the sequel in the first place. Literally Pretty scammed. much completely yes. scrapped. No more talent trees or hero missions. Instead, we're just going to pepper some PvE missions around every few seasons. Yeah, you get like an hour of PvE content by buying a battle pass. What a terrible value proposition. What the f- This was essentially the entire selling point for the sequel. Some of the remaining story content is still planned, with its first release on August 10th. But when it finally releases, it's only three missions. Mm -hmm. Blizzard is saying the game won't be getting any more story missions until at least 2024. They also add Overwatch 2 to Steam, and it instantly becomes the worst reviewed game of all time there. A new Blizzard record. Previously held by... Blizzard. The year is now 2023, and Blizzard's reputation has never been worse. So when Diablo 4's release approaches, people are cautious. But on the 5th of June, the game launches. And it's surprisingly good. There are some issues here and there, but reviews are mostly positive, yeah. and over 10 million people log in and play, making Diablo 4 Blizzard's fastest selling game of all time. For the first time in years, things are actually looking up. And this game was live service, meaning it would receive free seasons of content for the foreseeable future. Content. The first of which was launching in July. A month later, and in July, season one of the game drops. It is disastrous. And Reddit goes into a complete meltdown. Turns well, to be fair, the game was very good on release. And it was not very good, but the game was received very well on release. Because it was new. And Diablo 4 on release was okay. But it just had a lot of problems. And I think that at that time, people were happy with the, sta the current state of the game. But they were more optimistic that the game would continue to improve. And I think with season one, the game didn't really improve. It just kind of got worse, and they didn't listen to any of the feedback that players had. Like, for example, you still had to do all your renown again, and you had to do a bunch of other stuff, right? And so season one, yeah, season one basically made the game go backwards. Well, everything gets a big nerf, including the Metacritic score. Yeah. The Sorcerer class, which was already underpowered, is hit especially hard. Then there's the enemies being overpowered, much less XP, a bunch of reskinned dungeons and enemies, barely any new content, and zero quality of life changes. Everything here is wrong. <laughs> One streamer on Oh yeah, I remember this! Holy fuck, I forgot all about this! Blizzard announced all this math, and then all the math was wrong! I totally forgot about this! Oh my god! Do you remember what I was saying about, like, how the people, like, yeah, people now can't even do math, man. It's like, yeah, this was insane. <laughs> One streamer on Twitch tries to explain why the season isn't that bad. Here's how that goes. Explosion it's gonna blow up. I actually just lost my hardcore character while trying to explain this to you. I changed my mind. I hate this season. And yep. it seems Blizzard also has a bit of a fixation on the Battle Pass. Battle Pass. The battle Pass. Battle Pass. Battle Pass. Battle Pass. Speaking of which, it gives paid players 666 Platinum. The cheapest item in the store is 800. Also, back when Blizzard was designing the menus for the game, they decided to place the Activate Premium Battle Pass button right next to the button you're constantly pressing to see your season progression. Ooh, that's kind of small. There's also no confirmation button, so if you want to check your progression and accidentally misclick, 
Congratulations. Do you remember yeah. all the people that accidentally activated the battle pass? They're like, oh shit, no! Oh man, no! Just purchased it. There are oh multiple other God. confirmation buttons for other menu options. Yeah, everything else has a confirmation button. So Blizzard's last few years haven't been great. Somehow, Blizzard is now worse than Bethesda! It had slowly become clear to people. That I guess this must have been before the release of Starfield. With overreach from Activision, more fiscal concern, and most of the original talent having left the company, among other things. Maybe Blizzard wasn't the company it once was. And after a back to office mandate in 2023. Which, by the way, Riot did as well. Riot did the exact same thing. Even more talent is leaving. So much talent that Blizzard is yep. now actually creating crisis maps for what content they can and can't get done. But with the acquisition from Microsoft, who's currently focusing on making mm -hmm. good exclusives to slap on their Game Pass, oh, yeah. some fans are hopeful for change. But for now, the outlook- I'm no longer hopeful for change. I just, if change happens, I'll be happy. If it doesn't, I'm okay. I had a lot of, I had a lot of really good times. I played a lot of the games and I'm sure like if I go back and I play Season of Discovery, I'm sure it'll be fun. And, you know, maybe there'll be a Diablo 4 season I play in the future. I'll enjoy that. And you know, can always go back and play WoW, just like original WoW, like, that's cool. Like, I don't, like, I'm at the point now where, like, I'm so far past getting emotionally invested in a, in a company. It's just, like, it's so unhealthy. Like, if the game is, if the games are good, then I'll play it, and if they're not, I won't. I mean, it's not really a big deal, right? I mean, I've always loved Blizzard. Like, I, I hope they do better. I hope it's better. But, like, I'm not going to get invested in this. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, just uh, settle down. Dial it back. On Blizzard Entertainment remains bleak. Mm -hmm. And don't forget about the epic, accurate, action-packed War Thunder free-to-play PvP You've vehicle reached the game. acceptance stage? Sign up through the link in the description yeah. or comments for a big bonus pack. recipe for disappointment i think that really the problem is that with blizzard they focus so much on like i don't even really understand this is this is a really good video by the way i'm gonna give this video a like and a, a sub this is great only link it to you guys do the same thing if you liked it yeah this video went on this is a 30 minute video it's a long time i love this guy yeah I've, this is my first time i've ever seen one of those videos big boss big boss yeah there it is not blizzard activision they're lazy, but they still wakes money. I mean, like, I've... Here's the reality. I am just so fucking tired of getting mad about video games. Like, really, I'm just... I'm so tired of it. Like, it, it, it's just... It's so exhausting. Like, I'm gonna get mad about this game? Why? Why, why am I gonna get mad? Just don't play it. Holy shit. It's not that big of a deal. From software is the only company that it has me invested now. I mean, I'll look at what different companies make, and I if they make a good game, then great. I mean, if Blizzard makes a good game, I'll be really happy. But yeah, they've got to make like two or three good games in order for people to start taking them seriously again. Because yeah, he's definitely right. A lot of people do not take this shit seriously at all. Why well, watch these types of videos then? Well, it's interesting to talk about and think about, like, kind of how things have evolved. And it's good to, to, to reminisce a little bit on, you know, how good it used to be, right? I mean, holy fuck, like, this, this StarCraft 2, like, all of this shit, like, Warcraft 2. Dude, this was amazing. Like, holy fuck. Yeah, I, I mean, I have, like, I, I could, bro, I could sit around and talk about this forever. Yeah, that's no problem. It's nostalgic as fuck. It is. It absolutely is. Rockstar is the only company I somehow trust. Yeah, I mean, I just like... I just hope that one day they can get their shit together and start making games that are worth playing. And if they don't, then that's just the way it goes, man. Like, that's life. I mean, sometimes you just, uh... You know, you win some and you lose some. There it is. Definitely cool to watch. Yeah, it's sad to, to think about, like, all the different ways that, like, kind of they lost a lot of their, uh... Like, he didn't even talk about Warlords of Draenor. Which is, like, Warlords of Draenor was, like, a massive fucking failure. 
it was crazy because wad brought the subs back up to 10 million people were so excited and it was just a massive disappointment i really don't want to get worried about this ship or get mad about it anymore it's not healthy there's no reason to think about it. like that's the thing <laughs>